video then. I figured I'd make part two of the video, so I took the black bootlace I had from before. I think this bootlace is actually tougher leather than that other bootlace, but the other bootlace boot will do fine because it's made to be really hauled on by big boot people. So, so in this case here, I measured it like this. I went around the small, the small end of this counter shaft at the top here. So I went in the small end of the counter shaft, and then I measured it so it would be all set um, and tight, 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 as they say. And I just want to make sure it's not too much of a wrap in there. So, so as I move this around again, I want to use the tough part of that leather to go through. So I want to make sure that. The smooth face seems to be the toughest part. So when I put this lace, this boot lace back on the lathe, say that three times fast, right? Then I should be in a good position here. Let's see, is that squared off? Not really, but it's not bad. So, so I can squeeze this in here just like I did before. Um, shift it like that squeeze it against the back shift my hands over my hands and then just tighten that up right just like I did before and I want to make sure these are kind of even so push that one down a bit and I want to I want them both down further so that there's not too much bending going on this one can go down just a tad more I think like that maybe and then move it sideways a bit and I'm going to put a little screwdriver in here because I want to make sure it's bunched in the bottom as well and then do this side here so I'll make sure it's bunched in on this bottom part too there we go that's not bad there now that I got it in this situation I can tighten this up a bit now it's not going anywhere it's going nowhere. So, quick watch check. This is a gorgeous watch. So, this is my San Martin watch. And it's a homage for another kind of watch that starts with a T. So, it even has the uh, San, San Martin symbol on it. And these buckles actually, each one of these are screw in. So, they're tough as heck to get in and out, but they're beautiful. So there you go. That's there's there's the screw in right there, right? So they start back here, and there's a couple of them here, and a couple of them on the other side. And it's a fully milled clasp. You can tell I wear it a lot. There's a lot of dirt in there, and you can clean that up. And just a gorgeous clasp on it, right? So it's a double double hook on the clasp, right here, here, and here. So when you press that in, it goes like that sprung and it's just a gorgeous watch so um, this is ceramic bezel insert here this is all um, stainless steel aluminum uh, stainless steel not aluminum stainless steel and you can see just gorgeous finishing on this thing right just gorgeous even the edges here are trimmed nicely to map up and um, got a few scratches on it already as you can see and that's from wearing it I love to wear it and um, there you go. And there it is. That's my watch check. It's my San Martin. It's around 400 bucks, I think. Something like that. But I think it's basically a $1,000 watch that they charge 400 bucks for because it's made in China and you don't have to pay as much. So, so let's get back at this video here and continue on. All right, so I got to do the same thing I did before. I got some fishing line, a little piece of fishing line here. So I'm going to get another piece of fishing line. I'm going to do that even before I start reaming this thing. And again, this fishing line is amazing. Let me see. The hardest part of fishing line is find the end of it. If I stick the tape down and pull up, am I going to get some fishing line? Come on, where are you? Oh. 
And I got something here, but I think that's not. Is that right? Is that the fishing line? Yeah, that's it. So I found it. I found it, ladies and germs. So I'm going to get a good piece of it this time. So I don't have to fart around with not having a long enough piece of fishing line. And put the tape back right there on the fishing line. Try to stay in focus here. And then I'm going to use these. These are like toenail clippers, but they're pretty good. They're not squared at the end, so I wouldn't recommend it for doing anything that doesn't absolutely have to be squared. But, but they're really... There we go. They're really good. And then I'm going to put... I'm going to thread the needle. Threading the needle. I need to cut those both fingernails. Well, this, this thumbnail here was really handy today when I had to open up a pocket watch. And I'm going to show you how I did that in two seconds. It's show and tell day today, okay? Just in case you're curious. But I do have a lot of people that appreciate my videos and say, keep making them. Um, one gentleman said that um, he looks forward to them whenever he sees it. A posting there, he just can't wait to watch it, okay? So I got my own little Netflix channel going on here. There we go. That's uh, that's That's good there. I'd like to teach you how to make a fishing line too. Eh? So, so let me just point this here for a second. So there's the watch, and I use my thumbnail to get under here, and I can pop that open, and then my thumbnail goes under here too. This one was already open, and there it's ticking away beautifully. I had a great, great job on this watch. It's an old Waltham. It's a W M uh, L E L L E R Y Elry, Waltham, Massachusetts. W M L E Waltham, Massachusetts. We just shut that down, leave some famous fingerprints on there, and then shut this one down too. And I can get my thumbnail under there to open it. So I'll leave my thumbnail long until until the new year. And there, the watch is absolutely impeccable. That is the exact time right now. So just love this watch. Just love it. It did a lot of work on the setting mechanism, but once I got it working. And it's lever set, so again, the thumbnail is handy to pull out the lever set mechanism. Just go and then pull it out. So, just want to make sure it's not long and disgusting when I go back to work. There you go, as long as I'm working at home, no issue. So, let's start reaming this thing out here. So, so here's what you're doing here. Let me just get a close up on this so you can see what the action is. So, find center and Make sure you're the center of the leather, the piece of leather, like that. And there's enough leather on the end so that the leather's not just going to fall out on you. So I'm just going to go down just a bit more because all the stress is pulling upward from this position. So, so I'm just using these brooches, they're called, but you're reaming with the brooches. These ones go through pretty easy. So there we go. That one's a little off from center, I think, but it should do. I'm glad I got these. I can't remember where I bought these, but or bought them or got them. Sometimes I get donated some watch tools from people, but usually I end up buying them, so there's usually not that much donation going on. It's more purchasing than donation. I'm going to squish this down a little more to get that butterfly bolt out of my way. So there we go. That's done done and dusted so I should be able to find a hole for that pretty easy now the next one is right here and this time like I said last time so when you push down <coughs> push really lightly and any <coughs> excuse me any set of brooches will go through this without a problem because it's just leather and you can see it coming through the other end you'll be able to see it in a second there it is I'm going to cough again to get something in my throat. All right, here we go. Now I took a set of dumbbells. See, dumbbells strengthen the arms. I took a set of dumbbells and I put them on my couch so I wouldn't have to keep bending over to get them. How about that for lazy? And the reason I did it is so I could do more curls. And I walked by, so I've already done three sets today. And I'm going to do another set when I go downstairs. And just keep those dumbbells at the right length and I'll use them all the time. Brilliant, eh? A. I guess Canadians do say A a lot, don't we? Now this one here, we've got to find the hole and then come through with the needle backwards. 
So let's just call that done. And when I'm finished this whole thing, I'm actually going to run the lathe for you. So you can see what it looks like running with all the belts on. So I know the excitement. It's just breathtaking. Breathtaking excitement. Find the hole, push it through, push the needle through. This, this is the same needle I keep in my lathe box where I keep all kinds of crazy stuff and mainly collets and other things. Um, uh, I keep handles in there as well for my for my gravers. Let's see, find the hole, folks. Oh, almost had it. There it is. You just have to poke a few times and it'll show itself. So yeah, I keep the handles for my gravers in there. And that way I don't have to search around for them. And I keep um, my stones when I'm doing a, 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 a bounce a uh, bounce staff and I've got to use stones I keep the stones in there as well to finalize the bounce staff I think I'll go through again now and it gets a little tougher the second time because you've already gone through once and that fishing line is consuming the opening so just use the back of your thumbnail to push the needle that works nicely and yank it through like that I'm gonna make sure it's a little bit loose right so I'll just put the needle in there in a few seconds and loosen that up a bit now I gotta go through again so I'm gonna poke a few times until I find that hole ooh a la hole oh, there we go that is the hole so this one seems to be a bit tougher getting through this time so what i can do to make it easier is grab a pair of pliers and every watchmaker should have a boatload of tools watchmaking tools otherwise why are you a watchmaker i told somebody today we had the uh, society of watchmakers meeting today and i said well if you're not interested in having a lot of tools, then don't become a clockmaker. This is a clock guy. He was actually a surgeon in his spare time. And uh, I'm just going to put the, this in here so I can level off the uh, level off the level off. Sounds like a Russian name. Komarad level off. So I'm leaving that a little bit loose. And now I can clip that. I don't need to go around more than this many times. But I'll clip this. Well, actually, like I did last time, I used the needle to tie the knot first. So this time I'm going around the top. Like that. Right? And I'm going to come around this way. Did that work? That didn't work. Try again. Try again. Okay. Needle around the top. Like that. And then come around this way. And the stupid leather, the stupid knots always bend when you're there. Do that. And now I want to make sure it is this way. So I'm going to go around like this. I'm just trying to show you how we do this. Around like this. Come on. And. Did I get that right? I'm trying to see what side the other side of the knot is on here. No, I don't think I got it right. Let me go down deep. Going in deep. So the knot is coming out that way. Okay, so I think I was right. You want a box knot on this? A square knot, they're called. And the reason for that is that when you pull tight on them, they're not going to go anywhere. So there's the square knot there. And if I pull tight on the square knot, like that, that's good enough there. Then it shouldn't be an issue. And I want to clip these again because I'm going to burn them. So we just leave enough to be burnt. And that should do. There we go. I'll put that needle aside here. 
these clippers aside, get my divisive fire out. Now, if you burn this too much, it'll burn the actual stuff, and then you're screwed. I'm trying to angle this properly here. Right, that's good. It's melting that, and just wait a few seconds. Pull the camera back a bit. There's the action. I know this is like amazing action. Eh? Um, yeah, I think I'm good. I almost scared myself for a second there. It's like, did I do I have this thing around the correct way? No. Yes, I do. So there we go. Now I don't know how tight this was. So when I pull it, is it going to un? do is it too tight is it too loose i'm not sure so i want to straighten that up like this a bit and just like i did last time and if i pick away at it with a screwdriver i think i can get the inside to come out like that there we go that's one side and just pick the other side i want it to be a bit tight but not too tight so so you do it like that and this and that and this and that and this and that. Like that. And then go inside a little bit. Ow, I just poked my hand. <laughs> I went all the way through. And then go like this. Stop it. That's not too bad there. There we go. There's perfection for you. And now I just have to take put the screwdriver so all I did was use a screwdriver to kind of wedge that side in and now I need to loosen this up which I can't so I'll loosen the other side yeah, very carefully I'll just show you what I'm doing here over here I got this little jobby doohickey here I'm going to loosen that first um, this way like that and it's pushing everything back and then I want to put whoa easy does it there buddy I want to put this inside here and just try to make it square as possible so that's pretty good there so it just needs to do that that's good enough and I'll make sure that rope is or that this belt is also in there this one here you can loosen with a screwdriver but why bother when you can just tighten this one up here and I just want to make sure I've got it's nice and loose. There we go. Now this belt here should be able to fold over this here. Like that. That's a thing of perfection. And then the motor side should be able to fold over like that. There we go. Like that. Now I'm going to set this up for running to see if it actually works. Alright, it's time for some action. i got the pedal on my on my lap, I got a pedal down below that's powering the cord that's back here. So I got to push that one all the way down. And let me see if this actually works. And I've got this, the pin is out there. Yeah, we're good. And there we go. Now I should tighten this up a little bit. I've got a, like I said, I can just loosen this here and then tighten this back a bit. That fell off my leg here. Let me just grab it and pull it back a bit. There we go. That's more tight. My, more tight or tighter. And then let's see if that works a bit better. Yeah, that's a little less wobbling on this, this one here, as you can see. It's running true, which is nice. The black one runs a little bit better because I think the leather is a little bit smaller, but still it's running nice. So when you've got enough torque by grabbing this, I can't, I can, I can stop it if I pinch really hard, but for watch work, that's enough torque, not a problem. And then for oiling, you should oil your counter shaft bearing. So I got a little bottle here that's from a sewing company. And I use 0W20 synthetic oil, and I just put a little bit of dro a drop in here. And I do the other side too, because I'm a good boy. Make sure the other side's got oil in it. 
and also your lathes you got to make sure that in the lathe here there's usually though this thing's already oiled up but you've you've got a, a hole right there that you can put oil into and that's oiling that lathe as well that's why i turn it sideways this this way a little so the dust doesn't get in that hole and you do it on the other side as well so and that just makes sure that your your lathe is um running well so that's it there so now this this uh particular lathe can be run independently um it's in good condition it's a nice lathe it's a bowley lathe at least that's what the headstock says um so there's my video so once again um, thanks for watching my channel this is part two of of making the leather belts for watchmakers lathes and these are nice little belts and they work like really well run that for a few seconds this one's hairier i think i need to i think i need to trim the hair off it probably burn it off with my thing so anyway they don't make any noise the engine's noisy but the lay's nice and quiet all right the last last thing i gotta tell you to do is that when you're doing this after you finish it then then take the tension off the belt so just roll the belt off on one side let it hang and then roll the belt off i usually take it off the motor side and let it hang there too so the tension's off these belts not that they'll stretch a lot but it's good to keep the tension off them plus you're keeping the tension off the counter shaft and off the lathe the headstock that's the headstock this is um i've got a lot of lathes this is not one of my i think the, it's a from a expensive perspective it is a bowley, so it's not a cheap lathe. But I've got some lathes I use for making, uh, for for repivoting and that sort of thing. But uh, the counter shaft is uh, is aces, man. It's excellent. I could drill a hole and put another screw here, but not needed because these two screws here are solid, not an issue. And I'd made sure that this is at least as tight as it needs to be. Make sure your your spindles are all lined up properly on the lathe on this and this so it's all perfectly lined up so and i built the bracket in the back for the motor uh, it's not rocket science you just have to buy the right hardware and make sure it all fits nice so there you go that's a lathe setup it gives me a counter shaft the middle one i don't use i guess you could use that put another belt on it and use it to drive maybe a pivot file or something like this on the other side right so but but i usually don't bother using that you can unscrew it on the side here and move it around too so it lines up properly um anyway that's the uh the lathe that's part two of making the belts for the lathe so there you go hope you enjoyed the video please leave a lot of comments i like the comments i enjoy answering back um if you want any advice let me know i can give you good advice and i can give you bad advice it's up to you you take it and use it the way you want to there you go thanks a lot and take care Bye bye